Hello everybody, welcome back to the training of the N172. In this model, we're going to see talking about the VGO Designer, which is the software to program our HMIs. So far, we have seen how to create the, the communication. Okay, first the project, and then how we can configure the PLC inside the software so we can communicate. But now it's time to define the variables that are in the PLC in the software of the designer. Okay, so let me just show you a few steps here. What we can have. Let's hide me. As you can see here on the PLC side, okay, in the configuration, you have these areas, okay, the EPRON, the status, and the BIOS. Those variables in there have a specific address where the HMI can take this, take the data from there, okay, and visualize the information in the HMI. We have two possibilities here. We have the manually way to add the variables in the virtual designer or use this workaround to make the team faster. But in this part, we're going to focus in the manual exercise to know and understand how we can link the variables between the PLC and the HMI. These are the variables that we can create on your Designer. Okay, most of them are in the PLC, basically all of them. And in the your Designer, we have two different kinds of variables. Okay, we have the internals and the externals. The internals belong to the HMI and can be used inside the HMI, like the local variables in the PLCs, and the external come from other devices. Okay, there is something good to note that we can use internal and external variables inside the same project. So, let's start by creating the new variable. Okay, so if we go back to VGO Designer, in the Navigator tab, okay, we can see here variables. In this window, we can create variables. We can go with this icon, new variable, click, and then we can select a new variable, new variable type. For example, real, we can define the type, the external source. If I don't want to be real, we just click in that type and select the new value, external or internal. Okay, if you see here, when I select internal, there is no need for device address. But if I select external, yes. There is a faster way to uh, change this information, which is using the property inspector, which is this icon, if you're not able to see it. There we go, tick. In here, you can see more details about the variable, okay. This visualization can be accessed by double click on the variable. Okay, you can see internal, external. We, okay, I need to type an address. Okay, let's put internal. Here we have more details. If it's internal, we can put retentive. We had an input range, a login, as we can see here. So for the information about the variable, if we are not able to see and in here, we just double click and access to this information or using the property inspector. Okay, so now if this variable comes from the PLC, we need to first double check this. How we have defined our device on the network, in this case the PLC. If we have this configuration for this PLC, we just need to use this percentage NW and then the address that we have on the PLC side. Okay. Just let me show you. I think I put it, this information here. So, for example, in this case, in a particular example, is this is the variables on uh, PLC. Okay, the 172, where I have this information. In this example, you can see how you can address those different types of variables of the PLC. For example, we have a Boolean, 
and then we access to the boolean like this we need to put the memory address okay for the word and then the bit and it's the same for the rest of the variable instead of the bit we just leave the word in there okay simple as that we just need to copy the variable at the percentage nw and that's it and it changed only for the boolean that I need to specify the bit. Now there is something that you need to know. For example, if we instead of using the base one, okay, if we want to communicate, okay, in this particular case, for example, in the PLC, let me just go back. Mm -hmm. This is an example. Okay, in the PLC we have this variable eight nine six zero. It's a real variable. So we can type directly percent h w sixty. Okay, and we can access to this information. Okay, this configuration. This is a view. We're going to spell it in later. Just going to type the variable this way. Uh, float auto. Uh, uh, no, I believe I need to use now. Leave it at there. Okay, so. Let me just check if I have connection to the PLC. I need to power it up. CMD pin seven two. Okay, I have connection to the PLC. Now we're going to simulate the HMI just to show you I have connection. See. Here I can read the information from the PLC. There I can connect it. But let me show you one thing here. If I change this, okay, and I use this, no, sorry, I didn't want to show you this instead of one I use zero okay see how it changed the variable okay but the result should be the same okay I'm gonna touch the proof just to show you that it's doing something okay just read it and change it okay good so what I'm doing here is just to change this, okay, the base. But now imagine that at the beginning I didn't know this, okay, and I select, I forget about it, and I select the right address. It will try to get access to another. Let me just compile again. It will try to access to a different area, okay? And we have um, a room value, okay? So instead of trying to access into the 8960 on the PLC, okay, it add one, okay? And we are accessing to the 8. 961 of the PLC, okay. That's why we have this kind of error. So, if we know that this is the problem and check this to base one, it will automatically add one to this address and still is not going to work. So, the best solution is to, before adding any variables, 
verify this so we are trying to access to the right variable on the PLC you can see here it should be reading the right information okay so I'm going to delete this and delete this variable okay good Now, let me just go back to the presentation. Okay, this is an example about the difference between zero and one. I would need to be very careful in here when we start adding variables. This is more example for what happened if we don't use this, okay? This IEC. So basically, if you don't use the IEC syntax, we need to add the number four at the beginning of the number, okay? So we can get access to the same information. It's basically the same. If we don't like the IEC, it just automatically, let me just create a new variable again. Real percentage NLVU 8960. Let's put it again. Load real auto. So if we compile this, it should be working again. Fine, without any problem. Okay. And now if we delete this, we have the message. Okay, I understand. See, it's trying to access to the same variable. Okay, but different in a different way. Okay, it had the four in there at the beginning. So if we simulate this, it's accepting. Okay, it is the same variable, but for me, it's much easier to use this to access directly to the variable. And instead of percentage and F, which is float, I use MW because I just get used to it. Okay, and it's the same. And if we compile, it acts into the same variable. Okay. So now we have already discussed this. Okay, how to create a variable, which is very simple. New variable, the arrow here, select the variable they want. And that's it okay so in order to understand this what we're gonna do is to add these two variables okay they are come from the PLC side I'm going to create the indication of temperature on the local PLC and an alarm so let me show you how it's done I already have the real I got the boolean and I just forget the name I believe this one is X indication alarm and this one is our indication temp amp so this one should be percentage MW instead of using this I'm going to use this one okay because this one is a boolean so I need to select this one percentage and W and the bit offset is the address eight nine six two and the bit number zero okay and here's the visualization of this variable how the link of this variable okay we have the temperature and the indication for the alarm and now how we can see this information let me just delete this okay we have the numeric display this one click and then you can resize in this case, I'm going to use the float and double click on the variable so you can see it on the expression. Okay. Okay. And then in this case, I'm going to use number two and one for the decimal point. Here we can modify the font, but I'm not going to cover that yet. And here 
can put the unit and that's it okay this is for the visualization of the temperature and now I'm going to use the visualization for the lamp okay I'm going to use the lamp for the alarm just drag and select the size that you want click in this lamp that we have here to use the variable and use this one education alarm okay if we don't want to use this color we can go here color select the color when the variable is off and when the variable is on okay let me just make some modifications here in the camera so I can show you when I remove the cable okay let's hold on a minute <laughs> too many cables okay so you cannot see it here okay so this is the controller they are connected with here is the temperature sensor and now here is the is the HMI the simulation of the HMI so you can see here that we I have here the temperature sensor so we're going to remove and you can see here it changes status see it changes status and this is because it's connected okay which is the minus three two six eight uh, the value it is the and this is disconnected and uh, it changed the value because it's disconnected the boolean and if I plug it again there we go it just go back to normal again I'm gonna disconnect it okay uh, there we go uh, there we go again good so this is how we can uh, link the variables okay manually in this PLC and the HMI let me see if I forget to mention something else just minimize this a little bit more close the simulation save the project go back I believe it's, I had explained everything how to add the variable, the size. Ah, I didn't mention, but I think you already saw it. We have two ways to simulate this one, this icon with the thunder in there and rectangle to simulate. We simulate the HMI okay, in our laptop and use the Ethernet port in our PC to connect to the PLC and make it work. Another way is to use the HMI in this part it will be the target but right click on it and you have the start simulation if you use this start device simulation it will simulate the devices that you have connection with for example this I just do know the look and feel on everything see this is not the real PLC the real PLC is not disconnected let me just maximize this. See, the real PLC is not disconnected. So, if we want to simulate, probably the best solution for you would be to just start simulation instead of the buy simulation. And you can use also this icon to simulate the HMI in your laptop. So now your turn, for example, to make the connection, okay, to see if you are able to connect and simulate the HMI on your side, okay. So if you have any other question or something regarding this topic, just give us a call or send us an email. Oh.